No, buildup is a real good term. Buildup is usually when you can't get, or you're using baby shampoo or something like this, where the shampoo can't wash itself out of the hair. And the remaining product, like the bubble bath, isn't rinsed. And I've seen that happen so many times when I have demos, and a person will take a client, go right to the sink, add water, and they're lathering. We haven't even added the shampoo, and they're lathering. They should never lather when you try to wash something, someone's hair. Well, if you're lathering, just use the stuff they got on their head and rinse it out. Why, why waste good shampoo on them? I mean, it's insane. I don't know how they, they, they got, a, got out of that bowl without a good rinse. And the more bubble bath we put in, by the way, that's the hardest thing to get out. It's a leave-behind leave product if you're not careful, and you don't want to leave it behind. Because it was designed for, you know, pretty. You know, as opposed to, it wasn't, it's not a cleaning product. But yeah, that's a very good question. And sadly, that happens in a lot of cases where people do not take the time to rinse their hair thoroughly. So, good question. I saw another hand. Oh, okay. Two questions. Instead of the sulfate, what do they put in in place of sulfate-free shampoos? And the other one is about the shampoo conditioner in all one? in one. Yeah, that's <coughs> Let me answer the second one first. Shampoo conditioners in one are basically shampoos that have a shampoo with a silicone added. And the silicone is, like I say, tough to wash out, and so it stays behind. But the silicone is also a moisture-hungry product. It'll grab the moisture out of the air, grab the moisture out, and it basically coats the hair like a shellac. But it's very shiny, and people like that look. Is it an effective cleaner? No. Uh, silicone is an effective shiner. Mm -hmm. The end product is, is shine. Nothing more. I mean, you're, you're, at, you're after the look, not the feel or the health. And the first part of that, I'll get to you. The first part of the question, sulfate-free. Uh, sulfate-free shampoo is just a, uh, another molecule that has, instead of sodium lauryl sulfate, it's basically a sodium lauryl molecule less sulfate. So is it going to do the same damage that the sodium did? It's going to clean. Mm -hmm. People, you know, want to say it's healthier because it doesn't. I don't see it's any healthier. All I know is, is why it hasn't caught on really well, and you don't see it just... You know, everywhere with everybody have it. One, it's very watery because it's supposed to go into a rug doctor so you can, you know, be, be wet. It's really hard to thicken. So we just have a terrible time. I've spent two years on the product we make to get a product that will actually mimic and look syrupy. And you can't believe what I've done to, to the product to make it look syrupy with the additive. But you've got to have that thick feel or, or you won't buy it. Number two, it doesn't bubble. It wasn't designed to bubble trying to add enough bubble to it so it doesn't become not appealing has been tough. I have a product. I like it. Is it any good? I wouldn't use it on my dog. But people buy it by the ton because it's the marketing. It's the advertising. And people will buy advertising all day long. Somebody invests a lot of money in that and the hairdressers tout it and sell it. Thank you very much. Just keep those checks coming in. I wouldn't use the stuff, but people like that stuff. And then they tell you how good it is. In my business, the odd part about it, strangely, I'm not a hairdresser. I, I'm a chemist. That's, that was what I was trained to do. My mother's the hairdresser in the family, oddly enough. The owner of the company was a hairdresser, Gable. But so was Steve Stefano. He was a hairdresser. He has no chemistry degree. Uh, Jerry Redding. He was a hairdresser. No chemistry degree. Um, Jean-Paul DiGiorne, uh, not, not anything, no, no chemist. Uh, Paul Mitchell, another hairdresser. Uh, John Sebastian, another hairdresser. Fidel Sassoon, another hairdresser. So where did these guys get their chemistry degrees that made them experts? I'm still trying to figure that out. And I met a couple of these guys, you know, and they all sell their products and tell you how good it's going to be, and they've got great advertising. And So you say, okay, let's define a sodium molecule and how it interacts with a, you know, cocomibrobal betame or an amide. And he goes, I don't have a clue. I don't know. But we just put in the stuff and I went to hair. I'll tell you a, a, a story out of school. Another story. I was at Covina College. They were doing a hair show and I was a judge. Uh, the president of uh, Veda was there. We had Redkin there. We had one more. Forgot who else was there. We were judges. Oh, Joyko. Joyko was there at that time. A uh, nice fella, I thought, kinda, mish. And he was we were in the teacher's lounge, and his comment while we were waiting to go out to do the judging was, 
I have no idea why I agreed to this. I don't really care if these kids do anything with my shampoo other than sell it. That's why, you know, how I make my money. I mean, I was just out and out rude. You know, we're here to help the students. I'm here to help the students. I want you to learn. I want you to learn from your instructors. The most important part of your training is the 1600 hours you learn how to do a product. But I don't care what you use. These instructors can actually go home in their kitchens and bathrooms and use laundry soap, dish soap, whatever chemicals, and make people look nice. I don't care what brand they use. They can make people look nice. Do they have stuff they are favorites? Sure. Smell good? Sure. Philather good? Sure. But I guarantee that these people are artists. I know them. They are artists. That's what they're trying to teach you is hopefully whatever <coughs> brand you pick up, I don't care whose brand it is. My neighbor is one of the contracts that I have. You will make that client look nice so they come back to you. If they don't come back to you, then you've done a bad job, and that's terrible. Uh, and that's, what, that's all these people are trying to teach you. I'm just trying to teach you that don't get hung up on spending a lot of money on chemicals unless you, that basically to me are all the same. I don't care what you use because if you, if you can't use this product, then use that product. Gel is gel. There's only one formula for making styling gel in the world, and everybody makes it the same way. And some people make bad gel, and that sells. So I have companies that I make bad gel for because it's sold in the market. Uh, the hardest thing I've ever I've chased the bunny with a company called, uh, anyone ever heard of Johnny B? Mm -hmm. Guess who makes Johnny B? One of my contractors. He used to buy regular blue gel, stuff you at school buys, until one of his sales guys decided he was making, uh, Johnny was making, or Al actually, was making too much money, and he wanted more, more money for selling the product. And Johnny said, uh, Al said no. Uh, so he went out and had, uh, came to me and asked me if I'd make the gel for him. No. That's rude. I mean, I'm, I've got a relationship. I can't just sell to a sales guy. Uh, you know, that's a conflict of interest. So he went to Joe R. Labs up the street. The guy didn't know how to make gel. He made this batch of awful blue goo. It looked like nasty paste. Didn't have a clue how to make it. Well, John was a good sales guy. Got it designed in, and everybody started buying it under the name Champ Crew. Champ Crew. K-Man. So everybody liked it. It was really selling. Al got upset going, He's killing me. The guy's selling this crappy gel. Everybody's buying this, this blue paste. Can you make it? Sure, I know how to make bad gel. I know how to make good gel, which is hard part. Making bad gel is easy. And all you got to do is screw up the batch. Well, so we made up screwed up batches, and now he's basically selling truckloads of this stuff every week because everybody wanted bad gel. Mm -hmm. I don't care. If people want to buy bad gel and you guys buy it, thank you very much. At $11 a jar, I don't care. Uh, but that's how it goes. Buy good gel. Buy bad gel. You guys are the customers. You determine what's good and bad. Not, certainly not me.